Petros is Greek. Now, in Aramaic, Kepha means rock. Rock. The word Kepha means rock. Simon, which is his real name. Peter, which is the name given by Jesus. Petros is a Greek word meaning pebbles. You know pebbles? Those small, small rocks. Now, <clears throat> let's do this. Uh, Can I, erase, can I erase the top part? So, hold 
God anoints Peter. This is very important. Blessed are you, Peter. Blessed are you. <clears throat> Yourself you would not have known it, but my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. So, he was the inspired person. That's why he said the truth. You are the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the Living God. That's the truth. And Jesus Himself said that. I am the truth. Now, what brought us to the truth? Paul gave us the truth? Hmm? Did the Paul give us the truth? No. Did the panel give us the truth? Who's the panel? The Blue Ribbon Committee? The Apostles. The Apostles. They couldn't give us the truth. Who gave us the truth? It was Peter. Right? Matthew 16, very, very clearly, it was Peter who gave us the truth. It's not the panel, it's not the apostles as a panel, it's Peter himself. Now, <clears throat> Peter died a few years after this, okay? The question is, what happened to what Jesus promised? Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will never prevail against it. Never. Now how can that happen if Peter would die and there's no more successor? Think about it. Right? So, Peter, so Jesus knew that there would be successors. In fact, in Acts chapter 1, you'll see the succession. If you look at Acts chapter 1, you will see that Peter called for an election of whoever will succeed Judas Iscariot. Remember that? In Acts chapter 1, there was election. It was Peter who called for that election. We need to succeed, to name a successor for that office of Judas Iscariot. And there were two who were vying for it, and one won. It was? Matthias. The other one was? <laughs> Barnabas. It was Barnabas. It was Matthias who won. Acts chapter 1. Now, so therefore we can see the succession. <clears throat> and the truth of it is, the church has been more than 10, uh, 2,000 years now, right? And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. This will be God's way of strengthening and in uniting the church. Get, to, uh, get, uh, get your Bible, Luke 22, please. So, Luke chapter 22. Verse 31. Luke 22, verse 31. After 
me 31 and 32. What's it say? <clears throat> Satan demanded to have you, but he, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen you, brethren. This is the source and the basis for the infallibility of the Pope. I'm not saying the Pope never has sinned. What I'm saying is, when it comes to matters of morals and faith, and the Pope makes, makes statements or pronouncements from the chair of Peter, he will never make a mistake. That's the infallibility concept. That's the meaning of infallibility concept. Okay? Luke 22, 31 to 32. So it's clear that God's plan for the church is to strengthen one man. Right? To make Peter strong. Remember, Peter was the uh, how do you call that? Uh, impulsive guy. He was very impulsive. Remember that when Jesus was walking on the water? Is that you? Can I go too? Can I walk on the water? He was impulsive. And Jesus prayed. Remember, this, the, our intercessor is Jesus Christ. Jesus is our intercessor. You know that? He is the only one mediator between God and man, Jesus Christ. There is no other mediator. The mediation of the Blessed Mother and the saints are all in union with Jesus Christ. No other mediator, only Jesus between God and man. Clear? Now, <clears throat> so if Jesus prayed that Peter be strengthened, that's the basis. It's quite ironic, but it's also in Matthew 16, where Jesus called Peter Satan. It's also in Matthew 16, remember that? Get behind me, Satan. You, you think like a man. You think like a man. You know, a lot of Protestants have looked at Matthew 16. They said, in, in all serious studies, everywhere else in the Bible, the rock is Jesus Christ. But in Matthew 16, the rock is Peter. It couldn't be denied. We really studying and study each word in Matthew 16. So therefore, this rock here is what Jesus is really the rock. And Peter is also the rock. It's like a movie, you know the star? The movie stars. There's a one big name. And there are other stars with smaller names. That's Peter. Still the rock. <clears throat> so the three steps to take a seat. Jesus knew that Peter would have to be succeeded eventually. And for 2,000 plus years, there had been, there had been 2,000 years of straight, uninterrupted succession of popes. Uninterrupted. There's not one there's not one time when there was no Pope. There will always be one from Peter. So the one who succeeded, uh, Peter was... Linus. 